Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this uh, Relationship Thursday. I, my name is Sheila Rollins and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And on this YouTube, we are Overcomers Anonymous. We support anyone designed to overcome anything. We do it with Jesus Christ being a higher power and what he's accomplished for us on the cross. Therefore, our forgiveness, our completeness, our wholeness, our healing, the things that we thought were impossible becomes possible with Jesus Christ. So today we'll be starting a brand new series, which is entitled Why I Can't Keep a Man. So it's going to be really, really delicious. So you might want to stay with us. So, okay. So if you um, haven't already become a part of a YouTube family, this is a good time to do it. We are a nice series. We are on a roll with these series. So, okay. So basically you see the word subscribe, touch it. A bell will come up. Nothing out of your pocket, okay? Touch the bell and you'll see the word all. Hit all and that way you're, you know, you're turning on notifications to receive all of my new uploads, my contact, my new videos, okay? And then while you at it, why not um, share? Share everywhere with everyone on all social media platforms, okay? And encourage subscription as you share. And also, give me some thumbs up. Thumbs up say... You like what I'm doing, you get the message, um, it helps the YouTube, and also it lets me know what you like, okay? So please do give me some thumbs up. So like the subscription, it's totally free, okay? So please don't keep me in the dark. And you can drop a comment if you want. Scroll down below, you can drop a comment, you can drop, drop a, to um, a topic that you want me to cover, or just say hello, okay? Um, the arrow next to the title is a description. There's more information there about the YouTube and also my contact information. If you want me to come and speak, I do health, I do relationships, um, I do spirituality. Okay. So, all right. So, okay. So now when I first noticed that I was having problems in my male to female relationships, I was about maybe in my twenties. Okay. Uh, maybe early twenties, 18, 19, early twenties, about, I say early twenties. And I sat out for a while and I'm looking at this. I said, you know what? It just seems like to me that the name keep changing, but the person is the same. Not only are they the same, but also the way I am, reacting, behaving, or whatever is the same as well. So this ain't working. But however, I did not know how to fix what the problem was. And worse than that, I didn't even know that other people realized or knew that I was having problems keeping a man. Okay. Until one day, like among other things that my father would joke about, um, my father said it. And I was like, I was so surprised to find out that daddy knew that I couldn't keep a man. So, okay. So if you know my father though, he was kind of a jokester. You know, he would kid a lot and stuff like that. And so, you know, when I would meet guys and stuff like that, of course, you know, I would want them to meet my dad. Maybe they gave me a ride or something, whatever the case. And, you know, we ended up at my father's. And so daddy was so funny. Like sometimes he would like, like real subtly, like call the guy away. But jokingly though, really, I put emphasis on joking. He was really joking, but he was telling the truth. And I knew he was telling the truth. And he said, he would say to the guy, And sometimes I would catch him and I would just laugh, you know, whatever. But it became like an ongoing kind of joke that when I would introduce him to somebody, he would find a way. Like he did this right here so much, like trying to get the guy away from me so that, you know, he can tell the guy that she can't keep a man. She can't keep a man. And so he did that so much that, okay, uh, at the time he was living with my sister and she had a dog 
And it got to the point that when the dog wanted you to like follow her, you know what I mean? She would, she would do that too. And it would be so hilarious that I guess the dog was cap copying off of daddy when he would, you know, try to get these guys attention. So, you know, that was really kind of ironic to me that he even noticed. And I mean, the guys that I met, it wasn't like I was introducing them like they were my man. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that. Um, and so, like I said, it's one thing when you realize things yourself, but when people around you realize it too, it's like, you know what, this is a serious problem. Something is wrong. And the thing that I said it was ironic about my father knowing is that, first of all, he wasn't around that, that much. Okay. Um, he never deserted us or anything like that growing up, but he didn't live with us, at least not when I was, from my earliest remembrance. Um, the first time that I remember daddy being in a home was when my mother was at the hospital. She had had the last, my last sister and daddy had to come home to watch the other kids that had to go to school the next day. So he was left with me and under like what they call what our family call the little kids. So I'm the oldest of the little kids. And so that was my first remembrance of him. And then he say other things too about me. One of the other things that he says about me is that he's not alive right now, by the way. But one of the other things that he would say about me is like that girl right there. And it's funny though, because he will always be talking to somebody else about me and I'm in earshot of it. Like, I mean, I can hear him, I can see him or whatever. And he's like, let her sit down for a minute. Let her sit out down for a minute. She'd be out like a light. And I was like, wow, he really knew a lot about me, you know, um, that I was just like really surprised. Like, really? You knew that? And I think it was because I'm a doer. And I, I like to keep busy and stuff like that. But as soon as I sat down, I'll get me a quick nap and be off and running and doing something else. And daddy knew that. And so I guess too, because I'm his daughter. Okay. And so in the next, the, in the next few weeks, come back so that you can find out not just that I can't keep a man. But also, why? Because now I'm not only privy to the ideal that I can't keep a man, I also know why. And I should preference this to say why I couldn't keep a man. Because now it's been a while since I had a man. So uh, I should say couldn't. But however, there's a new day. And in this new day, I have learned why. And I had also, excuse me, once you learn why, then you can put in place things that you need to do to correct the problem. And I have. And every guy that I meet, I practice on. And, um, and I'm making some boo-boos. I am making some boo-boos too. But however, the boo-boos are not as bad as they were in my 20s, okay? And also, too, is that the boo-boos that I'm making, so to speak, it doesn't matter. And the reason why it doesn't matter is because they're not my man. They're not my man. They're just... I don't know, not mannequins, not <sighs> pseudos, not, not a pseudo. I'm just trying on them. I'm just, I'm practicing. That's what I'm doing. I'm practicing to get it right. So that when God brings me and my husband together, hopefully God is helping him too, that he will learn what it is that makes a relationship work. What a man want, what a woman want, 
what God wants for the two of us and bring it all together. So stay with me for the coming weeks while we go over this series that's entitled, Why I Can't Keep a Man. Okay, to be honest with you, I'm kind of proud that I wasn't able to keep the men that I had prior to now. They weren't really worth keeping because they weren't trying to keep me. They wasn't even trying to be kept. Okay, so remember to check out my food, my uh, fundraisers, you know, the um, vegan meat alternatives and sides, the non-dairy ice cream and other dessert, my other YouTube, The Pursuit to Christ, and also my playlist. Check out the playlist. Okay, so I love you. And I'll see you in the next YouTube. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.